In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve conservation of momentum problems. So let's start with this one. A 70 kilogram astronaut throws a 5 kilogram ball with a velocity of 20 meters per second east. What is the velocity of the astronaut? So let's draw a picture. Let's say this is the astronaut. and he throws a ball in this direction. Now based on Newton's third law, that means the astronaut is going to feel a force that's going to propel him in the opposite direction. So we know the direction of his velocity is going to be west. How can we calculate that velocity? Well based on the law of conservation of momentum, the momentum before he throws the ball is going to equal to the total momentum after he throws it. So P initial is equal to P final. So before the event, before he throws the ball, we have the momentum of the person or the astronaut plus the momentum of the ball. And then after he throws it, we're going to have a new momentum of the astronaut and the ball. So MAVA plus MBVB is equal to MAVA final plus MBVB final. Now, before he throws the ball, the astronaut and the ball are at rest. They're not moving. So the initial momentum on the left side is zero. Now, after he throws it, the astronaut and the ball will both have momentum. So therefore, we have this equation. 0 is equal to MAVA plus MBVB. So I'm going to take this term and move it to this side. So negative MAVA prime, which stands for final velocity, is equal to MBVB prime. So let's plug in what we know. The mass of the astronaut is 70 kilograms. And we're looking for the velocity of the astronaut after he throws the ball. The mass of the ball is 5 kilograms. And the velocity of the ball is positive 20. It's positive because the ball is moving towards the right in a positive x direction. So this is going to be 5 times 20, which is 100. So we got negative 70 VA prime is equal to 100. And now we get to divide both sides by negative 70. So the final velocity of the astronaut is negative 1.43 meters per second. Now the reason why the answer is negative is because he's moving in the negative x direction. Now notice that the velocity of the ball is significantly greater than the velocity of the astronaut. Because the astronaut has more mass, he's going to move backward with a lower speed. The ball has less mass than the astronaut, so it's going to move to the right with a greater velocity. So as the mass increases, the velocity decreases, assuming if the momentum is constant, if it's conserved. If you decrease the mass, the velocity increases. So whenever momentum is constant, objects with a very large mass tend to move slower, and objects with a low mass, objects that tend to be light, are the ones that move faster. Now here's another similar question. A 50 kilogram mass initially at rest explodes into two fragments. So let's say this is the 50 kilogram object. And then after some time period, it explodes into two parts. So let's say this is the first fragment, and this is the second fragment. Now the 30 kilogram fragment, that's going to move west at 40 meters per second. And our goal is to find the velocity 
of the 20 kilogram fragment. Now we know it has to move east, so the velocity has to be positive. So once again, we have the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. Before the event, this object was at rest. So the total initial momentum is zero. And the final momentum is going to be the momentum of the first fragment plus the momentum of the second fragment after the collision. So let's call this fragment A and fragment B. So just like before, we're going to have this equation, negative MAVA prime is equal to MB VB prime. So fragment A has a mass of 30 kilograms and a velocity of negative 40. Now you need to put the sign of the velocity because this is moving to the west, so it has a negative value. The mass of the second fragment, fragment B, is 20, and we need to calculate VB. So negative 30 times negative 40 is positive 1200, and that's equal to 20 times VB prime. So 1200 divided by 20 is 60. And we have a positive answer to indicate that it's going east in the positive x direction. So that's the final velocity of fragment B. Now fragment B has less mass than fragment A, and therefore fragment B has a greater speed. Fragment A has more mass, and so the speed is less. It's 40 meters per second as opposed to 60 meters per second. Now let's move on to our next problem. A 200 kilogram empty railroad cart moves east at 15 meters per second. A 50 kilogram rock is dropped straight down into the moving cart. What is the final speed of the railroad cart? So let's say this is the cart. It has a mass of 200 kilograms. And it's currently moving at a speed of 15 meters per second. Now, what's going to be the new speed if we take a rock and drop it into it? Now, the momentum of this object in the x direction is fixed. And this rock is moving in a negative y direction, so it's not going to affect the momentum of this cart in the x direction. So the momentum is going to be conserved. Now, if the momentum is constant, and if the mass increases by, in this case, adding the rock, we should expect that the speed should decrease. So our answer should be less than 15. Now, the momentum that we had before, p initial, has to equal the momentum after, p final. So let's calculate the initial momentum. It's going to be mass times velocity. So that's 200 times 15. So that's 3,000. Now that should equal the final momentum. So that's mv. Now the new mass is no longer 200. It's the 200 kilograms of the railroad cart plus 50 kilograms of the rock. So the total mass of this object now, this system, is going to be 250 kilograms. And now we got to calculate the new speed. So it's 3,000 divided by 250. And so the railroad cart with the rock is going to move at a combined speed of 12 meters per second. So now let's talk about what's happening here. So what happens as soon as the rock falls into the cart. So let's say this is the rock. Now, the speed of the rock in the x direction initially was 0. Now it's 12. So the rock accelerated in the x direction. So once you drop the rock, the rubble cart is moving. And so this portion of the rubble cart will exert a horizontal force 
on the rock, causing the rock to accelerate from 0 to 12 in the x direction. Now based on Newton's second law, for every action force there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So when a rebel car exerts a force on the rock, the rock exerts a force on a rebel car. And so that force slows down the rebel car from 15 meters per second to 12 meters per second. So that makes sense. The rebel car accelerates the rock and the rock decelerates the rebel car. But what's really happening here is that these forces are acting in such a way to transfer momentum from the railroad car to the rock. If we calculate the new momentum of the rebel car, the original momentum is 3000, but the new momentum is going to be the mass of 200 times the final speed of 12. So the rebel cart has a momentum of 2400 and the rock, which has a mass of 50 and a speed of 12, it's 50 times 12 which is 600. So the total momentum is still the same. So basically, the railroad cart lost 600 units of momentum, and that 600 units was transferred to the rock. So these forces, they acted in such a way to take some of the momentum from the railroad cart and transfer it to the rock until the speeds of the rock and the cart were the same, until they reach equilibrium, so to speak. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how forces can transfer momentum from one object to another.